Painting a watercolor flamingo in Procreate is easier than you think and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it, no matter your skill level. Hey wonderful people, it's Genevieve and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. And with that said, grab your drawing tools and let's get started. So as usual, we're going to start by creating a new canvas so we have somewhere to draw. Now for reference, uh, these are the dimensions I will be using. It is the size of a pre-textured file, which I will show you in a few seconds. But make sure you pick dimensions that work for your own project requirements. And if you're not exactly sure how to pick a canvas size, I have a video in which I teach you everything you need to know in order to make your decision. So I'll link that in the description below. And speaking of the pre-textured file, it's basically just a bunch of layers that can help you get a paper effect on your piece. So if I hide my example here, you can see it's kind of this fiber texture. Now, if you want to check out this file, so this pre-textured file, it will be linked in the description below. It is part of my big brush bundle, but it is not essential. You don't need it if you want to follow along the video. I'm going to give you tips to create textures without this file. Now, one question I often get is how to get my reference image on the top left. It's quite simple. All you have to do is go in the wrench icon menu at the top here, selecting the canvas submenu and then activating the reference toggle, which is going to let you import an image. Now, obviously you don't need to do that because you have the video to use as a reference, but if you want, you could download my image with the color palette. There will be both link description below and they're totally free to download. Okay, so with that out of the way, we are going to start by simply mapping out the base shape of the flamingo. So for that, we're going to use a nice bright pink, making sure that it is not too light because we want to make sure that we see the color really well. And we're going to use brushes that have transparency. So make sure that it's a nice, very intense pink. And then you're simply going to create a layer, rename it to flamingo and put it below textures if you have any in your files. If not, again, don't worry, I'm going to give you tips on creating some textures yourself later. And in this video, I'm always going to be suggesting two different kind of brushes. One is going to be a free brush that comes with Procreate. It's going to allow you to follow along just fine. And the other brushes are going to be brushes from the big brush bundle. So the same bundle in which you're going to have the textured file. And those brushes, they're not essential. I want to make that very clear. They're not essential, but they can help you save some time and just get more professional results overall because they do have some randomness in color and they do have some textures in the brushes. So you don't have to manually go back in later and add some texture and color variation it is within the brush themselves but again they're not essential if you do want to check them out though they will be linked in the description below and there's always a special promo code for the youtube people and at this stage for the base colors you could go ahead and select in the airbrushing panel so the brushes that come with procreate you could select the hard brush and using the opacity slider which is right under the size slider you can just lower the opacity probably around 40 percent now all you want at this stage is to get some sort of an overlap if you do two different strokes of colors so that's what we're going to use basically to create the watercolor effect or at least most of it so that's one option if you do have the watercolor brushes though go ahead and pick the dark edges watercolor so you're going to get the same overlapping effect but you're also going to get a bit of texture and color randomness like i was telling you about so at this stage all we want to do is map out the base shape of the flamingo so we have this kind of wing slash body oval in one corner and then we have the neck the head and the beak so for the neck pretty simple just go ahead and roughly sketch it out if you watch some of my other videos and my other watercolor videos you know i usually say try to not lift the pencil between shapes when you're drawing with watercolor brushes because that's going to create some overlaps and we want to use those overlaps consciously and not just randomly but honestly for this video we're going to add so many random overlaps later that it doesn't matter so you can really just go ahead kind of sketch out your shape with the watercolor brushes or with the hard brush and lower opacity and then fill them in so the neck is going to be this kind of thick s and then you're just going to have a bit more of a, a round for the head and it really doesn't need to be perfect at this stage just roughly map it out later at the end of the video i'm going to show you how to tweak your shapes 
Once you have the base body, base neck, you can go back with your same brush, same color and just overlap your strokes to create some one color variation and also two shadows. So you're going to create shadows where there are different parts of the body overlapping, so you're going to see between the wing and the neck. And then you're going to create some random color variation by just adding some super crazy weird looking scribbles on the wing, on the bottom of the neck and maybe also adding a bit of a shadow towards the bottom part of the head. So you can see here, it looks crazy and that's okay. This tutorial is definitely a case of trusting the process because it's going to look very, very bad before it looks good, but it's all just a bunch of incredibly simple step. I think it's honestly one of my easiest tutorials I've made so far. So just stick with it. Trust me, we're going to make it look good. But for now, we just want to quickly map out everything. So once you have your base flamingo, go ahead and create a new layer, rename this one to beak. You can honestly draw the beak on the flamingo layer, but I just think it's easier to keep them separate if we want to change the shape later. And for the beak, you're going to use just a neutral gray, and you're going to draw this kind of half boomerang shape, I guess. So it's kind of a, a beak that is really bendy on a flamingo, and it's quite thick. So here, if you can draw your entire shape without creating overlap, that's great, otherwise don't worry about it. But we are going to create some intentional overlap to add a shadow on the bottom part of the beak. You know, the beak opens, so there should be two sections. And you can go over that section, I don't know, two, three times, just making sure that the color is really dark at this stage. Awesome! So we're going to take a little break from our crazy looking flamingo to work on the background a little bit because it's just going to make everything uh, easier in the next few stages. So go ahead and create a new layer, put it below the flamingo layer and rename it to leaves. So here you could honestly skip the leaves and just have a solid color background, but the leaves are quite simple and they do add a lot of interest. So I highly recommend drawing them. And if you're picking your own colors here, you can go back to your pink and at the bottom of the color menu selecting harmony, you're going to have the option to find a few different colors that work well with your pink. So if you select complementary or split complementary, you're going to see a few blue, teal and green and then you can pick from those and you know it's going to work well with what you have so far. So you're going to have a piece that is just coherent in terms of the color. So pick whatever color you want for the background. I'm going to go with a teal that I had picked previously, so from my color palette. And then simply with the same brush you used before, map out where you want the different uh, branches, I guess, to be. So here I'm going to have two with slightly different angles. And then along those branches, you can draw very thin pointy leaves. So we're kind of drawing palms, but you could go ahead with any kind of leaf. Honestly, you could go in with Monstera that would look really, really good. Um, like even banana split leaves would look good. So you can experiment with different shapes of leaf here, but essentially all you want to do is draw the silhouette of the leaves. And at this stage, if you can avoid lifting your pencil between the different little sections, so in my case, between the pointy leaves, that can save you time later because we don't want to have a lot going on in the background. We just want the background to be there, but not, you know, overtaking the flamingo itself. So making sure that the leaves are just a solid silhouette, you know, a solid color, pretty uniform, um, is probably your best bet here. So if you draw a shape and you lift up your pencil, it's not the end of the world. You can come back and blend it later. But honestly, if if I were to do that, I would probably just undo and redo that little section and try to not lift it. And here you can really just be very, very loose with your leaves. It don't need to be perfect at all. So, you know, for example, if you have little gaps or holes between the leaves, that's totally okay. If you're getting leaves that are overlapping each other, that's super cool. You could also have some bands in the leaves so they're not just, you know, all in the same angle and being super perfect. So it's really a case here of, you know, taking the time to think about what you're doing, but also not taking too long to agonize over those leaves because they're just going to be a subtle element in the background. They're definitely not going to be that important. And you're also clearly noticing by now that it overlaps super weirdly with the flamingo. For now, don't worry, we're going to fix all of that later. So just go ahead and map out your leaves. If the flamingo is in the way, you could go ahead and just hide the flamingo layer while you're working on your leaves. That honestly might be a better idea, but yeah. And with that, it is time for the secret password. So if you've watched this final video, please go ahead and leave a comment with the word bird. If you're new on the channel, you might be like, what's the deal with the secret password? What is that all about? <laughs> it's kind of a game that we're playing and 
people seem to really like trying to find the word within my videos but more than that it gives me a lot of insight into how to edit and pace my videos better which is super super important for the channel because it helps me create better tutorials for you guys and that's you know what we all want and it's also really cool because you know you guys know me you see my face in the intro you hear my voice throughout the entire video but i have no idea who you guys are and whenever you leave a comment whatever the comment is i get to sometimes see your face sometimes see your name and it's just really cool to see who's part of the creative community that we're building here on this channel so just leave a comment with the word bird and then we're going to keep going so once you're done with your leaf what you can do is just create a new layer put it below the leaves layer and rename this one to color wash now if you don't want to have leaf and just want to have a solid color well kind of solid color this is the step that you could do so here you could go back in the airbrushing panel if you're using the free brushes and picking the soft brush this time making sure that you also lower the opacity probably more around 30 percent this time but you can really experiment that's going to depend on the colors you're using but if you do have the watercolor brushes go ahead and pick the color shifting blotches and then make it super 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 big and then with the same color you used for the leaves so a teal blue or green you could go ahead and gently brush to create some sort of a gradient from the very bottom of your piece towards the top of your piece. So since we're using brushes that have lower opacity, so either just a soft brush that you manually lower the opacity of or watercolor brushes, you can layer strokes to create gradients. So you're going to go over the bottom part a bunch of times and then very few times the closer you get towards the top. So that's going to create this sort of kind of gradient effect. But it doesn't need to be a perfect gradient Oops, that was not good um <laughs> yeah it doesn't need to be this perfect gradient at all you just want to have something happening in the background but it really doesn't need to be perfect in any shape or form now at this stage you could go ahead and use the selection tool setting it to freehand and create a random selection towards the bottom of your piece and then making sure color fill is deactivated you can go and feather your selection the feathering amount is going to depend on the size of your canvas, but it's probably going to be around 30 or 40%. So you want to make sure that it's feathered quite a lot. And then you can go in the adjustment panel here at the top, selecting hue, saturation, brightness. So the very first option, you're going to be able to add even more color variation. So shifting the hue, maybe, maybe playing with the brightness as well so that the bottom part is even darker. You can really experiment here. There's not just one right way to do it. You can play with the settings until you find something you like and then just deselect. Now, if you're using free brushes, you could go ahead and draw some totally random selections and repeat that step a few times to add a lot of color variation. But if you're using the color shifting blotches, that color variation is already in there, so you just need to do it once to create a bit of a shadow towards the bottom. At this stage, you could also go back to the leaves layer and just experiment, play with the blending modes and see if there's one that you like more than just normal. Here, once more, there's no right or wrong way to do it. It's really a question of experimentation. I know blending modes are confusing to a lot of people, but that's one kind of thing that there's no right or wrong way to do it. It's really just a question of taking the time to quickly go through them and seeing, oh, what do they do? How do they affect the top color, the base color? And is there a blending mode that I like at all? And if not, that's fine. Here, for my colors, I really think linear burn looks cool, but I'm going to lower the opacity a little bit so it's not quite as intense. Awesome! So now we have everything mapped out, the hardest part is done. It's just a case of making this look good because it just looks terrible right now. And the first thing we're going to do is create a layer between the flamingo and the background. Rename this layer to, I don't know, flamingo silhouette or white, whatever. And on this layer, we're simply going to draw a white flamingo silhouette, <laughs> so picking white. And that's going to allow us to not see the leaves through the flamingo. So we're all going to use, no matter the brushes that you're using, we're all going to go into your brushing panel, picking the hard brush, bringing the opacity back up to 100% and we're just going to outline, oh, that's way too big, <laughs> we're just going to outline the shape of the flamingo. So it doesn't need to be super precise, it's okay if your white goes a little bit outside the line or if there's, you know, 
a little bit of a gap between the line and the white but you want to outline the entire shape so everything needs to be outlined so you can then fill it in and create a silhouette and as you can see already the pink is popping again so that's a technique that you can use whenever you're trying to create a watercolor effect or you are working with brushes that have lower transparency and you want to add a texture or a background below your character under your character i should say you can always just create a new layer between your character between your background and just paint on on, on that layer with white and that's going to create some sort of barrier between your character and the background and if you're familiar with procreate or just digital art in general you might be asking yourself you know, you know why wouldn't you create just a mask or honestly just erase straight onto the background layers that would be an option but if you wanted to move your character afterwards so for example if you want to just shift your flamingo towards the right or the top or the left whatever um you need to shift the mask or just redraw the leaves if you erase them so that's kind of annoying but if you just draw a silhouette on a separate background then you can just select the silhouette along with your flamingo and it's just you know super super easy so as you can see here our pink is back in shape it's starting to look a bit better but we still have a few steps to do obviously the first one we're going to do is back on the flamingo layer we are going to use our eraser to bring some lights back into the pink now the brush you use for your eraser doesn't really matter because we're going to blend everything later but i recommend that we all go ahead and use in the airbrushing panel the medium brush and at this stage you can be very quick with your erasing because just like for the painting we're going to blend everything later so we just want to roughly map out some white areas and those you're going to want to focus them towards the top of your flamingo obviously to recreate this you know light effect from the sun so you're going to have some on top of the body slash wing but you also might get some random just erased splotches i guess within the wing itself to add this texture of, like the feather element to it you can also erase on the top part of the neck and maybe a little tiny 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 line on the bottom part itself to help it pop from the background and also go ahead and erase the section where the eye is going to be and maybe a bit of a highlight on the head as well awesome so we're also going to erase some parts on the beak to add highlights on there so just go back select your beak layer and then you can erase the very top so usually flamingo beaks tend to be a bit wider at the top so you can erase that making sure that there's still a little bit of a gray line to delimitate you know the beak from the background you can also add a very thin line along the two different sections and maybe a very nice intense highlight on the top of the beak itself just to make it look like it's shiny And once you've erased the crazy looking lights that we have right now, it's finally time to start blending to make this look good. So here you have a few different options. You can use the smudge tool, so the little finger icon at the top. And either in the airbrushing panel, setting it to the soft brush, which is going to create really super uniform gradients, I guess. Or you could go in the painting panel and just experimenting with the brushes here. Now, there's not a specific one I have in mind. Uh, I personally usually use the stucco brush, but that's not necessarily for watercolor vibe, but it does have a bit of texture with it. So that might help you create some texture with your piece, but really experimenting here. It's all about seeing what you like for your own piece. If you have the watercolor brushes though, you could all as usual go in the paintbrush tool. So not the smudge tool, but the paintbrush and picking the watercolor blender at the very bottom. And at this stage, all we have to do is, well, we're going to start with the flamingo. So select your flamingo layer, go over all the weird overlaps that look so crazy and blend them. Now here, we don't want to create a perfectly smooth gradient because then that's not going to look like watercolor. So make sure that when you blend, you create this kind of random scribble. So you don't create a nice smooth line. You really scribble all over your piece until it's nice and blended. And you're going to see it's create this sort of gradient but within the gradient there's a lot of color variation and there's some texture that's going to start building there now one thing though make sure that you don't blend the edges of your flamingo because that 
that's not a good look. We want the, the very edge of the flamingo, so like the top of the head and the neck and all those, to remain nice and crisp. Otherwise, it's going to look like our flamingo is just disappearing in the background. That's not what we want. We just want to blend the inner shape of the flamingo. But don't forget to also blend the parts that you erased, so the lights, blend those in as well with the rest of the color. Be careful as well when you blend the line between the body and the neck. You want to make sure that it stays crisp, so don't blend it too much. And for the wing, since it's a bunch of feather, you might want to tone down your scribbles a little bit, maybe just trying to follow the direction of the wing, so going up and down more than in all directions, but still making sure that it's not perfectly smooth. You do want to have a lot of randomness within your colors. And as you probably guessed it, we're going to do the same thing on the beak. So just selecting the beak layer, but with the same brush or the same smudge tool, just going in and blending what is requiring some blending. So any weird overlap, but making sure, of course, the two sections of the beak are still very clean and crisp. Okay, so it's already starting to look better, which is very encouraging. We still have a few things to do, obviously, to really bring this piece together. But I just want to tell you that if you've been using the free brushes, at this stage, you might want to go back with the selection tool, freehand, feathering, hue saturation technique that we used to add some color variation within the background and do that on the flamingo itself, maybe two, three times with different selections every time, of course, to add a bunch of texture within the flamingo. So you don't have to do that if you've been using the watercolor brushes because like I said there's some texture within the brush but if you're using free brushes that is how you're going to add some randomness. And at this stage we are going to select the flamingo layer and we're going to go straight in the adjustment panel selecting hue saturation and brightness without a selection this time and at the very top we're going to click on the pencil option. Now you're going to be able to go and select which brush we want to use. So here we're all going to use in the airbrushing panel, either the soft brush or the medium brush. Um, so we don't want a watercolor brush here and we want to make sure that the brush we use still has some transparency to it. So probably lowering your opacity around 30 or 40% once more. And here you're going to gently brush over the parts of your flamingo that are in the light. So the top of the head, the top of the neck, the top of the wing. And that's going to allow you to essentially create a selection with your brush that you can then tweak with the settings at the bottom. So here what we're going to do is we're going to shift the hue towards the right to create a bit more of a like a salmon pink as opposed to a flamingo pink and then you're going to lift up the brightness a little bit and lift up the saturation quite a lot. So that way we're going to create this effect of more color variation, yes, but color variation that is strategic this time. We want a color variation that is going to represent, I guess, the sun hitting the flamingo. So that's why we're focusing it on the light. So again, on top of the wing and on top of the neck, wherever you have a highlight, you can just gently brush right there to make it look a little bit more like a almost orange instead of just pink. Once you've brushed everywhere, feel free to fine tune the settings. Once more, these are going to depend on the opacity of your brush you use and the base color you use, so you don't need to use the same numbers as I did. If I quickly undo or redo here, you're going to see it just takes a few seconds to do, but it adds a lot already to the piece. And we're going to repeat this, but this time with shadows. So just going back to hue, saturation, and brightness, selecting the pencil option. You don't have to change your brush again. It's going to remember which one you used. And this time you're going to brush any area that would be really, really in the shadow. So between the body and the neck and probably below the head and maybe a little bit on the wing as well. And at this stage, you might want to experiment with lowering the saturation, maybe shifting the hue slightly towards the left to get a cooler color and lowering the brightness a little bit. I know here right now I, I lifted it up, but <laughs> I'm gonna lower it in a second. We can really play with the sliders here. And even if you do something different than I do, but you like it better, I mean, that's totally fine here. So we just want to add a bit more color variation that is targeted in the shadow zones. Okay, we're really, really close to the end. Now we just need to add a few details like the eyes. So go ahead and create a new layer above the beak layer and above the flamingos, above everything. And rename this one to details. And here you can use a super nice dark charcoal color. So not quite black, but almost there. In terms of brushes, you could pick in the sketching panel, the 6B pencil. That would be a really nice option. Or if you have the watercolor brushes, you could pick the coloring pencil. 
And in terms of details, honestly, it's going to depend on your piece, but you might want to go ahead and just slightly add a bit more definition between the different parts of the beak. So just a very thin line there, maybe adding some sort of a nostril as well. So this kind of uh, candy cane shape, I guess, maybe mapping out the top of the beak a little bit, but making sure you don't overdo it because otherwise it's not going to look like watercolor anymore. So very gentle, tiny little lines. But one thing that you probably want to do, which, uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's quite tricky. It's drawing the eye. And the thing with flamingos, their eyes are kind of creepy. So I recommend just starting with a straight up circle, a black circle, quite small. And then you could just stop there, honestly, <laughs> just add the highlight. But if you want a bit more accurate, you would go in with a bright yellow and then you would outline your black with yellow. I know. <laughs> uh, honestly, you could really try and do something different here, maybe making it look just cutesy, so drawing a bigger eye with a lot of highlight. Because, uh, I don't know, flamingo's eyes are weird. You can see here, I mean, it is what it is. That's what the flamingo eye should be, but feel free to, at this stage, just do something else. And since we're drawing on a separate layer, you can always use the selection tool to draw a selection around your eye and then move it or resize it or rotate it as needed with the arrow tool if you feel like it's not where it should be. So that's always a tool you have in your back pocket. But yeah, I'm not going to spend more time on an eye. It's just... I don't know. <laughs> Um, this detail layer, you might want to go ahead and play with the opacity of it a little bit, so maybe lowering it between 80 and 90%, just so that the details don't look as digital and they blend a bit better, which is going to help with the watercolor vibe. You can also go ahead and swipe all the flamingo layers with one finger towards the right, which is going to allow you to create a group, and then you can just collapse the group, rename it to flamingo, and then your file is going to be much more organized. And with that group selected, if you go back in the adjustment panel, at the bottom you're going to see liquify. And if you set your liquify tool to push, you're going to be able to very quickly just move the colors around. Like right now this looks crazy, but if you're a bit more gentle and precise, this tool can allow you to tweak your flamingo. So if there's some shapes that you're not happy with, you can tweak them with liquify. And you know, you can do this as much as you want whenever you're done with an illustration, you can always go back with the liquify tool. But there's one thing you need to keep in mind though, is the more you play around and move the pixels, pixels, pixels around, the more you risk stretching them, which is going to result essentially in a loss of quality. So you're going to start seeing the pixels within your piece if you overdo it. Now you have to do it a lot, a lot, a lot for that to happen, but I just want to let you know. And you can see here, it takes just a few seconds, but you can really transform your flamingo if, if you feel the need for that. You can also add some splatters on the background to make it look more watercolor. So just creating a new layer below the flamingo group, renaming it to splatters. And here you can experiment with blending modes as well. I know in my case with those colors, I like linear burn, so I'm just going to go straight up for linear burn. And you can pick either the same color you use for the leaves or a slightly different version. So I'm going to go with a bit more of a blue as opposed of a teal. And in terms of brushes here, I'm not going to lie to you, the free option that come with Procreate is not not optimal. Um, you could go in the spray paint and pick the G clay brush, but as you can see, it's quite, quite dense. So you would have to use it super sparingly. Now, if you do have the watercolor brushes though, go ahead and select the splatter brush, and then you can just simply add some splatters on the background, making sure that you don't overdo it though. So you just want to have a little bit to kind of bring the piece together, but without making it look like your background is just a bunch of splatters either. And you're probably going to want to go back and play with the opacity of your splatters so they're not too intense. I'm probably going to lower mine around 60%, you know, something like that. You want to see them, but not having them steal the show. And one more thing you can do if you have the watercolor brushes, there is not an equivalent within Procreate, so sorry about that. Um, but you can go back to the flamingo layer and picking the salt brush. Now the salt brush is quite different. It's kind of a smudge tool. So you're just going to start from the outside of your flamingo and then you're going to drag your pencil towards the inside and that's going to create a bunch of white little speckles within your shape which just looks good. So just like for the splatters you want to make sure that you don't overdo it. It's just a little detail that you can add at the end to really make your piece pop a little bit more. And if you enjoyed this video and want to learn how to create more watercolor pieces in Procreate, I highly recommend you check out this playlist in which I'm going to teach you exactly that. But before you leave, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the weekly videos I post every Tuesday and Saturday. Then click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.